This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Over the last month or so, the French and Italian governments have got into a bit of a tiff over immigration. Georgia Maloney's new government in Italy are pretty staunchly anti-immigration by Western European standards. And last month, they turned away a private humanitarian rescue ship with 234 migrants on it, forcing it to sail to France instead. In response, the French government refused to take in 3,500 asylum seekers currently in Italy, essentially freezing its participation in the EU's migrant sharing solidarity mechanism and beefing up security on the French-Italian border. Last week, Maloney took things up a notch when she claimed that migrants were only travelling from Africa to Europe because France was exploiting the continent's natural wealth via the CFA franc. This isn't the first time this theory has come up either. Luigi Di Maio, then Italy's Deputy Prime Minister, made similar comments back in 2019. Anyway, we thought this would be a good opportunity to take a look at France's enduring influence in post-colonial Africa, the CFA franc, and whether France is really exploiting Africa for its resources, as Maloney suggests. Let's start with a bit of history. At its peak, the French Empire controlled 10% of the world's land area, including much of West Africa. In reaction to the wave of independence that followed the Second World War, the French came up with the idea of a CFA franc monetary system, a currency union that pegged the currencies of most francophone African countries to the French franc. The CFA stands for Franc of the Financial Community of Africa, but originally stood for Franc of the French Colonies in Africa. Technically, there were two African francs, the West African CFA franc, used in eight West African countries, and the Central African CFA franc, used in six Central African countries. But because the two currencies have always been at parity, they're effectively interchangeable. Now, at the time, the French government pitched it as a humanitarian exercise, because the CFA was actually stronger than the French franc, which was devalued in order to peg it to the dollar as part of the new Bretton Woods system. From 1945 until 1948, one CFA franc bought 1.7 French francs, before a revaluation in 1948 to two French francs, which lasted until 1959. This allowed these countries to continue importing stuff from abroad at the same rate they had previously before the franc was devalued. Today, the CFA franc is pegged to the euro at 656 CFA francs to the euro, and the French Treasury guarantees all CFA members unlimited convertibility of CFA francs into euros. While the claim that the CFA franc was purely humanitarian might sound implausible, it's worth pointing out that membership of the CFA is voluntary, and until at least the 80s, CFA franc countries mostly outperformed neighbouring economies, with higher growth and lower inflation. CFA members also, for the most part, avoided the currency crises that beset their African neighbours. Take Guinea, for example, a former French colony that borders four CFA countries and was actually part of the CFA Union until 1959, when then-president Ahmed Sekou Touré decided to start Guinea's own currency, the Guinea franc, as part of Guinea's wider independence movement, making it the first country in Africa to pursue an economic policy of complete decolonization. Unfortunately for Guinea, growth was basically stagnant and the Guinea franc began to devalue, prompting a full-on economic crisis in the late 70s, which basically lasted until the IMF came in with a structural adjustment programme in the mid-80s. However, even if the CFA franc might have helped its members economically, many people still see it as a form of French neo-imperialism. For starters, the CFA gives France monetary sovereignty over these 14 countries, and therefore political and economic influence in the region. Membership of the CFA also comes with patronisingly stringent restrictions. In exchange for the unlimited convertibility between CFA francs and euros guaranteed by the French Treasury, CFA countries have to deposit 50% of their foreign exchange reserves at the Bank of France in exchange for French foreign aid plus another 20% to act as collateral for any financial liabilities. CFA countries can only access 15% of the money in any given year, and if they need more than that, they'd have to borrow their own money from France at a fee. While there's a plan to scrap these borrowing requirements as part of the move towards a new so-called eco-currency that is eventually intended to replace the CFA franc, this hasn't happened yet. 
CFA skeptics also point to France's other apparently neo-colonial activities in Africa. For example, France maintains a considerable military presence in Africa, and since 1960, France has intervened militarily more than 50 times on the continent, often to support regimes friendly to Paris. This has included support for despots, including Faure Gassimbi in Togo, Idris Deby in Chad, Paul Baia in Cameroon, Denis Sassou in Congo, and Ali Bongo in Gabon. Today, France continues to have a military presence in the Francophone areas of Eastern Africa, Central Africa, and Western Africa, as well as on the French territories of Mayotte and Réunion. While Paris maintains that its deployments here are primarily about fighting terrorism, often via the G5 Sahel grouping, the French military has intervened to prop up pro-Paris dictators in the past, and more recently, to support French companies with commercial interests in the region. For example, French troops are deployed to Niger to secure uranium mines, run by the French state-owned company Areva, which is important for France's nuclear power plants and weapons. In addition, France has maintained a military presence in Gabon since they helped prop up Omar Bongo in the mid-60s. This has massively benefited a French company called Total Energies, which has been extracting Gabonese oil and uranium for over 80 years. Gabon is now under the rule of Omar Bongo's son, Ali Bongo. You get the idea. While there might plausibly be some economic benefits to the CFA franc, its critics see it as a form of French neocolonialism continuous with France's continued military presence on the continent, and argue that France essentially blackmails CFA members by using the benefits of the CFA to force CFA members to give up 70% of their revenues. It's not just the Italians that think this either. It's a widespread talking point in Francophone Africa, and even former French Prime Minister and President Jacques Chirac reportedly admitted in 2007 that France, quote, bled and looted Africa. Perhaps you find evaluating the history, culture, and economics of the French in Africa a bit, well, tricky. Well, luckily for you, you can improve your knowledge of these sorts of subjects over on Brilliant. Because the world has never needed more smart thinkers. And Brilliant not only helps you brush up on the basics, but also leads you through university-level concepts like infinity, the history of maths, and the numbers behind neural networks. It's not just maths either. There's interactive courses on physics, computer science, and a whole variety of STEM topics. Plus, there's some incredibly fun content from your favourite YouTubers too, like Kurt's Gazette and a brand new course from our Nebula friends over at Real Engineering. So finish off the year by bettering yourself with Brilliant, where you'll find thousands of incredible courses where you'll learn by doing, as well as discovering whole new ways of thinking. And better still, the first 200 people to sign up using our link in the description will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support.